Well, I'm joined now by Labour's finance spokesman Ian Gray and the Conservative finance spokesman Gavin Brown. Here in Glasgow is the Green Party co-convener Patrick Harvey and also in Edinburgh, the SNP's Mark MacDonald. Um, Ian Gray, the problem both you actually and the SNP have at the moment, isn't it, is that the fact is the economy is growing rather strongly and George Osborne can say, well, you might not have liked what I've been doing over the past few years, but it's what, and not only is it what, you opposed every single thing I did to turn the economy around. Well, what uh, we, we said uh, and have been saying for a number of years, and it's true that we agree with the SNP on this, was that uh, George Osborne was taking the wrong approach to the economy. He was cutting too fast and too deep. Uh, and he was failing to use government spending to, to stimulate the economy. And yes, I still but the, the problem you have think, is well, that well, George Osborne can point to a fast-growing economy, at least for the moment, as evidence to back up his view. There's nothing whatsoever you can point to to back up the idea that you were somehow right. Well, he, he can point to an economy which is now predicted to grow a little faster than it was predicted to grow previously, but he has still... Uh, for example, this year borrowing almost £200 billion more than he said he would do. And in fact, uh, in his what, four years four years in office now, uh, he has borrowed more than Labour governments borrowed in 13 years uh, in office. Yes, so, that's because uh, of the recession. I, I think you can look at... Well, I think you can look at the figures. So, sorry, and, are you and, saying uh, he's not being austere enough now? Is that the new line? No, I'm not it? saying that at all. I'm saying that I still think uh, that uh, I was right, we were right, that... Uh, the economy would be in better shape now. If we uh, borrowed uh, more when you've just criticised George Osborne for and, borrowing too much? And, it, and invested it properly in order to stimulate economic growth, yes. That's the approach that we think he should uh, have said, okay. taken, and I think the economy All would right. have been well, in a stronger position if he had. You're in the same boat, Mark McDonald. You see, a lot of people watch this and think, well, look, uh, OK, even if they don't vote Conservative or don't particularly like Conservatives, they say, well, look, the evidence seems to show the economy is growing. We all knew this was would be tough. OK, we've suffered as individuals and as families. Um, no one ever said it would be easy. George Osborne never said it would be easy. But like Labour, the SNP opposed every single thing that the coalition government has done. And they keep saying somehow or other it would have been better under them. But they've got no evidence either to show that. Well, I think if you look at where the economy uh, was predicted to be in, uh, from 2010 and where it's going to end up in 2015, you'll see that it isn't going to be in as healthy a position as was being predicted initially by Osborne. So I think by any measure, yes, and he can uh, point he's going to fail to meet out at the, time, uh, the targets you he set himself. Yes, because the Eurozone crisis came along. I mean, <laughs> you know, Osborne has been perfectly upfront about saying, look, he didn't meet his targets. Um, have you got a better explanation? Well, what we've said all along, Gordon, is that the, the prolonged suffering that people have faced as a result of the austerity agenda need not ha have, have been as prolonged and had uh, Osborne... But like Labour, you've a, well, got no well, evidence if you to will, point to. Well, well if, you, if you will allow me to articulate the point before interrupting, Gordon, you'll see where I'm going with it. If he had used the money that he's borrowed to invest in capital infrastructure rather than choking off the capital budgets of the Scottish Government, uh, we might have seen uh, a faster recovery through that accelerated capital expenditure. The borrowing he's done has not been used for capital expenditure, it's been used to paper over the cracks of his austerity agenda. So well, I, I'm, by I'm, any measure, by any measure uh, the plan that he's put right, in place I, sorry, has not worked because he's I, had to augment it. I think I understand, I understand the argument that you and Labour believe there should have been uh, fewer cuts in, in, in capital spending and, and George Osborne has himself rather reversed recently his policy in that. But your idea that, oh, he's borrowed money and it shouldn't have been spent where it has been spent, it's been spent on welfare benefits. Are you saying we shouldn't have paid people welfare during the recession? No, that's not what I'm saying at all, Gordon. In fact, uh, and the point that I think Alison Johnson made in the debate is one that we've made as well, which is that if you look at how benefits uh, are being spent in the UK uh, as a whole, there's a huge amount that's being spent on people who are in work. Uh, and if you improve the wages uh, of people in work, and if you also get people into work through, yeah. for example, the, increased the, capital the, investment the, this and increased is an, employment, the, hang on. You this then is a nice intellectual below. argument to, 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 about what we could do to change welfare policy over 20 years. George Osborne, like the Labour government before him, was faced with the immediate impact of the most severe recession since actually as before the Great Depression. He had to pay that money out immediately to 
to keep people in unemployment benefits. I mean, you're not seriously suggesting you shouldn't have done that. And these ideas about what you could do in the future, that's fine, that's an interesting debate. But the point is the money that you say you should have spent in capital spending was paid out in welfare benefits because there was a recession. I'm saying if you look at the, you know, you're not going to tell me that every single pound that George Osborne has borrowed beyond that which he predicted was used for the purposes that you've identified. There's a large amount of that money that has been used to paper over the fact that his austerity agenda was not working. That's the reason that he borrowed that money. We've argued consistently, and in fairness, uh, Ian Gray has also made the point uh, that that money should have been used for capital investment in All infrastructure right, well, okay, projects. You made that point which would have uh, Ga Gavin Brown. Um, Twenty-five billion pounds of cuts in the next parliament. Is is this just political positioning? I mean, or are we actually expected to take that seriously? This is the chancellor's best estimate of what he thinks will be necessary to continue the recovery, so that it is sustained. Are you sure you don't mean it's, it's, it's his best estimate of how to put the Labour Party in a difficult position? Well, I think he's put the figures out there. I think he's been pretty clear in his explanation. And I think uh, we should be crediting the Chancellor at the moment. Of course, unemployment is far too high. But with the deficit down, with employment increasing uh, and unemployment decreasing, and the business surveys, uh, importantly, looking far more confident for the future, at the moment, and there are still risks, of course, but at the moment, uh, the plan uh, appears to be working. Right, and given that George Osborne hasn't enlightened us in where he's going to find another £25 billion of savings, could you? Well, the headline figure has been put out there. Of course, all the detailed work uh, is yet to be published. We're talking about, obviously, going well, well into well, the next... For example, the IFS Parliament, so. reckons that would mean, if you keep ring-fencing at the NHS, it would mean cuts of 30% to, for example the Army, Air Force, Navy and the police force? It, it, it's not for me to speculate where the uh, changes will be made. I mean, I think the headline figure is particularly clear. I think there is detailed work going to be done and it will be presented to the country in the way that uh, detailed work All right. uh, has been okay. presented in the past. Um, you're in the SNP Labour camp in this. You've criticised <laughs> everything about Osborne and he could perfectly well say to you as well, hang on, you're just wrong. I was right. I think in many ways George Osborne's plan is working because George Osborne's plan is not about an economy that works in most people's interests. George Osborne's plan is for a permanently smaller public sector, a permanently weaker state, uh, and a permanent shift towards yeah. a meaner okay. welfare See, state. The, that plan is working, no. and that's why we should be angry about it, because you know what he's doing is something which is going to continue to serve the interests right. of the corporate interests that he has been serving, and is going to be absolutely polar opposite to what Scotland's interests are and the interests of the majority of people. Yeah. Uh, you've got the same problem that Ian Gray and Mark McDonald have. You see, a lot of people will be watching this and say, look, this has been really tough. We want to get back to normal. We want to get back to some sort of economic growth. And Patrick Harvey might sit some there and, sort and of denounce... Normal. Uh, it depends uh, what sort of normal... George Osborne is doing it. It depends what sort of normal we want to get back to. Do we want to get back to the kind of normal where in those decades of economic growth we saw ever-widening inequality, where we saw the vast well, bulk hang on, of the that's not proceeds, George Osborne's fault. You'll need to go. Over in 2010. No, it's a it's a continuity between Tory, New Labour, and now Coalition UK governments, where the vast proceeds of economic growth were hoarded by the people who needed them the least, and we saw a chronic gulf of inequality. That's the kind of normal that I think we should see an end to. That's why we need a, a more radical vision All right. uh, from whether people okay. are asking for, for the UK or Scottish independence to be the outcome of the, the referendum. We need a, a new kind of economics to, to rise out of this, a new economic right. model that's democratically uh, accountable. I, I, I'm curious, Mark MacDonald, you were talking about you know, the bad policies of austerity earlier. I mean, are, are we really supposed to believe that if we vote for independence, that the simple fact of Scotland becoming an independent country will obviate the need for any further austerity measures? Well, what it does is it puts the resources of Scotland in control of, of the government of Scotland and allows them to make choices on how they use those resources. And we've laid out in the white paper... No, no hang on, that's an, that's, a, that's an answer to a different question. That's an answer to the question... If Scotland becomes independent, would an independent Scottish government control Scottish resources? Answer, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. The question I asked you was, are you saying that the mere fact of becoming independent would obviate the need for any further austerity? 
Well, it opens up the opportunity to do things differently, and we've said all along that we believe things could be done differently. The idea so, that so there would be no further well, austerity. Well the, well, the idea that austerity is the only game in town, Gordon, I'm afraid, just doesn't wash. I mean, if you look at the comments by, for example, people like Krugman and Stieglitz, Nobel laureates, they've commented frequently on the fact that the austerity agenda is not the one that, that they believe uh, the, the UK economy so, should so, have gone so down. On, just, so just to be clear on this, so, so if the SNP were running an independent Scotland, you would abandon any target of getting Scottish debt down to, say, the kind of Maastricht levels from where it would be at the point of independence. You would simply say, that's irrelevant. We will not have any debt targets. We'll, we will not have any targets of reducing public spending or raising taxation. It, none of it matters. No, we've been clear all along that we would seek to manage the Scottish economy in a, a, a prudent fashion. But the idea that you, you do that simply by parroting the agenda that's being yeah, but you haven't told us what you Osborne. would do. I'm afraid it, it doesn't need to be done I mean, that uh, way. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, just to say, oh, it'll be brilliant, we'll have lots of economic growth because it'll be Scotland. I mean, that's not an economic policy, that's just blather. Well, that's not what I said, Gordon, so, you know, if you're going to misquote so, so, me, so then what that's I, what, what, In that case, really if you're not going to have any austerity, tell me what your policies will be instead of austerity? Well, look, we've made clear, for example, if you look at the, the policy uh, in relation to childcare in the white paper, the fact that it will move a huge number uh, of women who are currently not in the workforce into the workforce, that yeah, then Yeah, I mean, again, maybe over 10 or 20 years, but you're talking about an immediate problem. You know, but, you're, again, you're answering a different question. It may well be that your ideas in childcare are fabulous. They don't, they don't get rid of an immediate budget deficit problem. Well, the question is whether or not what is being proposed by Osborne is what needs to be done. Now, that's the, the vision that comes with a no vote. Uh, and we've been quite clear that we don't believe that that's the, the way that Scotland should, should proceed. And in terms of what Gavin Brown is saying, I think uh, in terms of the £25 billion, I'd be interested to know how much of that is going to come from uh, changes or scrapping of the Barnet formula, which is something oh, okay. that we know well, the well, Tories are clamouring for. Let's, Ian Gray, uh, see, uh, I think a lot of people watching might feel that uh, you and Ed Bowles' plans for what you would do differently if you won the election in 2015 are glimmering with about all the crystal clarity that we've got from the SNP about what they would do. Well, let, let me give you two examples of things which Labour would do very differently uh, to George Osborne. The first is uh, that we would uh, freeze energy prices uh, for a period uh, which would allow us to then reform uh, the, the electricity, the energy, electricity and gas markets. Uh, so that the companies would not be able, to, those companies would not be able to charge unreasonable prices in order to make unreasonable profits. That's a direct benefit um, for those who are struggling with the cost of living. Uh, yeah, and I, it's again, not a cost the public person. Uh, uh, so, sorry, the companies. I, I, well, let uh, me. Uh, hang on, well, it's, a, it's a bit like what Mike McDonald said. It, it might all be no. a very good idea. It's got nothing to do with reducing the deficit. I mean, when George Osborne announced his plans the other day, Ed Balls said he accepted Labour would have to make cuts in 2015-16 if it won the next election, but it would make different cuts than the ones that the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats were proposing to make. So what cuts would Ed Balls make? Well, nobody is suggesting that the, the, the fiscal position would magically uh, improve overnight in 2015. But, but fine, but Only, if Osborne is so wrong well, about austerity, what's your alternative proposal for 2015-16? Well, let, let me give you another example. Um, we would put uh, all 16 to 24 year olds uh, back into work, give them a job opportunity and pay for that through a levy on bankers' bonuses. Now, that would mean that sorry, many, I'm many not, thousands sorry, of young people... Ed people. Ball said he accepted Labour would have to make cuts in 2015-16, but it would make different cuts than the ones the coalition government was proposing. And you tell me that your cuts would be funding a programme for... No, you, you, so you, what asked, are your cuts what we, you asked what we would do differently. No, These I asked the what kind cuts you would make that were different. Well, the, the, the approach that we take to the economy will be part of the manifesto that we present in 2015. But yes, it will be different from uh, the austerity programme, the £25 billion All right, cuts, so which George Osborne is you don't know. talking about today. Well, and I have to say to you, when uh, the Prime Minister was asked today about uh, George Osborne's proposals for cuts, um, he didn't seem to know either uh, what cuts he was going to make. Right, so none of you seem to know. I mean, Gavin Brown, you don't know how on earth you would go about achieving £25 billion of cuts, do you? You haven't got a clue. 
Well, I think the, the, the detail has not been published. I mean, the headline figure only came oh, out go at, on. The very, at the very Speculate beginning. Speculate wildly. Well, very... Do you fancy cutting the army <laughs> by 30%? Obviously, it's, say? Uh, it's well above my pay grade to speculate I'm wildly, but there, there can be no doubt that the detail will be set out and in the run-up uh, to <laughs> right. the general Hang election... On. Patrick is Harvey is volunteering to solve your problem for you. <laughs> Off you go. Well, your, your quip to Gavin about the military does actually have a grain of truth in it. There are huge military budgets that we don't need to replicate uh, in Scotland if we had the opportunity to make those choices here. But this is also about more than just how much you're going to cut. It's also about the other side uh, of the, the government balance sheet, which is taxation. And Greens have been, I think, the only party consistently saying that after all those decades of the wealthiest individuals and the wealthiest big businesses hoarding the wealth of our society, it's time for them to pay a bit more of, of their share in taxation. Some of the wealthiest people are paying less of their income in taxation than many of the poorest so, so, people so in we're our running society. Out of just what taxes do you want to put up then? Well, we've argued uh, in the Scottish context for a shift towards land value taxes, for example, to replace existing local government finances. If Scotland was de designing a tax system overall, uh, we would certainly want to see wealthier people paying a, a higher degree of, of income tax. But the, the point is that these possibilities only open up. I don't pretend that independence gives us the certainty, but it opens the door to possibilities All that right. simply are closed to us at the moment. Luke, we're going to have to stop there. Uh, to be continued, no doubt, endlessly. Thank you all very much indeed.